Paisanos! Welcome to episode 60 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. This week's animated intro was done by Tristan. If you want to show some love to this dude, you can follow him on Twitter at Calimano. But with that said, let's cover the most iconic game of all time. So although this is going to be a very short episode, I figured we could just go right out of the gate and show you something very cool. And what you're looking at here is a little bit of truth behind the bonus areas that are underground in Super Mario Bros. Thanks to Necarun, who I'll leave a link to in the description down below, we were able to disable the boundaries in almost all the areas of Super Mario Bros. And what it reveals down here is that all the bonus areas are connected together. They're all on one map, and if you have the Game Genie code to face through walls, you could theoretically warp to completely different stages by going through the pipes designated to these specific bonus areas. However, once you get past the very last bonus room, you will not find anything, not even glitches. Instead, Mario just runs infinitely into the void. So you may have noticed that this episode is called Mario Slash Duck Hunt and not Super Mario Brothers. And there's a very good reason for that, because we actually want to talk about Duck Hunt in this episode. And the Mario Slash Duck Hunt cartridge is technically one game. Now there isn't much to say about Duck Hunt, I mean there's so little to say about it. But one of the most interesting things that I found here is that if we disable the layer that has the grass and environment, we can actually see the full sprite model for the Duck Hunt dog. And as it turns out, his body actually goes a little further down than the blades of grass suggest, which actually acts as a complete model, eh, minus his feet. And before we say goodbye to Duck Hunt entirely and just make the rest of this entirely dedicated to Super Mario Brothers, I also wanted to show off when the Duck Hunt dog jumps behind the grass at the start of every round, you can actually see that his sprite model flashes white on the very last frame of animation. So the shocking show stealer is actually the piranha plants. These guys are exceptionally interesting because of what they do behind the pipes. As you'll see here when you're away from the pipe, piranhas disappear at the start of the animation and then reappear as they come back up through the pipe. However, if Mario is standing right next to the pipe, the piranhas actually exist in the game the entire time and never disappear until Mario moves away. But by far the most bizarre thing about all this is that if Mario kills a piranha plant with a firepower, that piranha plant will be split in half with its bottom half facing down down and its upper half severed and above it. And that piranha will not go away at any time. Another thing that's really interesting too about the piranha plant is that when Mario leaves an underground area, and as you know a piranha plant will be heading up as you move towards the flagpole, Mario actually touches the piranha plant as he moves through the pipe. Now here's something that requires a long explanation, but I promise you it's very interesting. So at the end of every single level in Super Mario Brothers, you might notice that Mario goes inside the castle and then the flag comes up. Well, what if I told you that Mario is actually still in the game, even when he quote unquote goes inside the castle? In fact, he doesn't just stand inside the castle, he's walking inside the castle. Well, what if I also told you that the reason why he's using this animation is because if there wasn't a boundary in front of Mario's way, he would just continue walking. Nah, don't believe me? When Mario jumps over the flagpole and he doesn't activate the stage completion, you might actually notice that he's able to sit on top of a brick block, and if you walk at it from different angles, he also cannot move. This is because this is one portion of this castle model that is an actual brick block, and not the castle itself. And in fact, I can even prove this by sliding underneath the stage and breaking the block that's actually connected to this castle. Once you break the block, you can actually see the blue sky backdrop that's part of the game. Now the question is, what happens when Mario completes a stage without this block here? Now I had to be a little bit creative here because if I was to break that block, it's very likely that I would break the ground underneath it as well because those are also blocks that can be broken. So what I did was I broke enough ground in front of the flagpole to give me a large enough runway to use the Game Genie face through code, slide through the ground in a sitting position, and as I just get under the block that's connected to the castle, I then jump and break that one block only. Then I complete the stage and then we can see what happens. And as it turns out, Mario just keeps walking indefinitely and doesn't move on to the next stage. Speaking of walking indefinitely, probably a lot of you have already already seen this because you can jump over the flagpole by legitimate means. And what I'm talking about here is what is beyond the castle if you're able to get beyond the flagpole. And a lot of people will just tell you that there's nothing out here, you'll just keep walking indefinitely until the timer runs out and then you die. But what if we turned off the timer? What can we find if we keep running about the fear of death looming over our heads? And a lot like my Super Mario Bros. 3 episode, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below, if you walk forward long enough, the game's programming starts to get a little bit confused. And you can actually start to find different pieces of environment that don't belong here. Like for example one chunk of a mushroom platform that Mario himself can actually stand on. 
You know, we just saw a second ago that Mario's in a walking cycle when he goes inside the castle. Quick little question here is what does it look like when he does it in the big castles that lead into Bowser's lair? <laughs> One fool, funny enough, the little flag that springs up at the end of every regular stage actually does appear on these bigger castles as well, but the player's not allowed to see it. However, if we remove some of the sprite on this castle, you can actually still see the flag being sprung up like any other stage. And also, what does it look like when we run past the boundaries of the castle goals? Well, actually, what's really cool here is that it has those castle walls that are used in the last few stages of the game. And of course, if you do the same thing that we did last time, you'll also find platforms that you can jump on, as well as some weird graphical glitches. So a moment ago when I was talking about the piranha plants, you actually got a chance to see what Mario looks like when he's going through the pipe vertically. But what does it look like when Mario goes through the pipe horizontally? Does he run in place like he does with the castle? And actually, no, he does not. Instead, once his character's behind the pipe layer, he actually just stands in place until the level is loaded. And now let's talk about the underwater stage. One thing I've always wanted to know as a little kid was, what is beyond this pipe that leads you back to the goalpost? I want to see what goes on further past it. And once again, thanks to the help of Neko Run and Game Genie itself, I was able to get on top of the shoreline and keep on going. And as it turns out, it's just green blocks for miles and miles, with no graphical glitches in sight. Now, we are still not done with the original Super Mario Brothers, but I did want to take the time to compare it to its remake on the Super Nintendo. Lots of people criticized me for not having it in my Super Mario Brothers 3 episode, and here on Boundary Break, I take fewer feedback. So anyways, the surprising thing here is that a lot of what was in Super Mario Brothers 1 is ever present here in the remake. Like for example, all the Piranha Plants behaviors, the flag in the Bowser layers, and Mario running in place when he's behind the castle. So let's talk about what's different. Some of the things that you'll notice here is that the blocks that stop Mario from walking off the stage actually don't exist in this version. Apparently it wasn't needed. And also because the Super Nintendo has an effect where Mario starts to fade to black as he goes inside the doorway, he becomes a straight up silhouette when he's behind the castle. Also, when you kill the piranha plants, the top half is now a completely different color from the normal green. In fact, it looks more like its updated version with the red color palette. <laughs> Before we start doing anything boundary breaking, did anyone else notice that the hammers bounce off of Mario when he's in an invincible state? This is kind of news to me. Yeah, but alright, moving on. First thing I wanted to show you is when we take the axe away from the fight with Bowser, we can actually walk around in the toad room. But one of the things you'll also notice here is that apparently Bowser will never jump to give chase to Mario. This is something I've always kind of wondered, but of course since the axe is in the way I never was able to find out. But now I got a definitive answer. Anyways, if we walk around we can see that we have layer priority over Toad, but Toad himself is actually on the sprite layer. He's He's not in the backdrop. Though there isn't any reason why he couldn't be, the player can't interact with Toad whatsoever, and Mario passes over him exactly like a background object. And another thing too is, can we find anything if we keep running past the end of the level? And although it takes a very, very, very long time to find anything, it seems as though if you run long enough, you will re-encounter with Bowser if you leave him alive. So this is technically the same exact Bowser as the one you're supposed to find normally in the game. Which leads to the conclusion that this toad behind him is the same toad that you find when you complete the stage. And of course, can we find any boundary breaking elements with the princess herself? Princess Peach! And yeah, actually one thing I found kind of interesting is if you remove the background layer, you can actually see that Princess Toadstool's complete sprite model actually has white pixels that come from each side of her gown. Now I found this particularly interesting because if you look at any sprite sheet that includes Princess Peach from the original Super Mario Brothers, most of these guys leave that detail out because those white pixels are camouflaged into the dungeon tiles themselves. So for many people like myself, this is the first time we've ever seen the fully intended image of Princess Toadstool at the end of Super Mario Brothers. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I know what some of you are probably thinking, I want more! Like, this was a short episode. Well, I gotta admit to you, it was a real challenge to find 10 minutes worth of stuff to show you. And you gotta trust me, if there was anything more to see in the original Super Mario Brothers, I'd show it to you. But if you're still pining for more, I do have a Super Mario Brothers 3 episode that's got a ton of new discoveries, so I'd really recommend checking it out. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description down below. It's also gonna give you my playlist, so if you're looking to catch up on Boundary Break, it's got you covered. Also, I try not to do this too often because it's more about the entertainment than anything else but in just two more months I will be living on my own so if you like what I'm doing and you want to support this as a weekly show I got a patreon man one dollar will do it also big huge thank you to Neko Run and Tristan for making this an exceptional episode it wouldn't be half as amazing without your help so thank you so much all right guys that's all I got have yourselves a great night and take care doodles bye